During welding, it's what's around or fed into the welding arc that causes porosity. This is due to the fact that hydrocarbons and moisture separate into their atomic components in the arc and the hydrogen is absorbed into the weld. When the aluminum cools and changes to a solid, the hydrogen is kicked out because the solubility of hydrogen in aluminum is poor at the temperature that aluminum solidifies and it comes out as a gas. If the puddle solidifies around the bubble of hydrogen, it becomes porosity. Even the cleanest weldment will produce welds with some hydrogen because there's always hydrogen in the environment. It's impossible to perfectly clean everything, but you can take precautions that will make a significant difference in the quality of your welds. This video will cover the importance of minimizing porosity, sources of hydrogen, the solution, controlling or minimizing hydrogen. The major issue with porosity is that the more you have, the more it starts to affect the properties of the weld. The mechanical strength of the weld is reduced because it's not all weld, it's gas, and gas has no strength. If your weld is on something that conducts electricity, like a smelter bus bar, then you decrease the electrical conductivity of it because, again, part of the weld is gas. Porosity affects thermal conductivity. If your aluminum weld is part of a heating or cooling circuit, then its efficiency is reduced because again, porosity reduces the thermal conductivity of the weld and leaks may occur if the porosity is interconnected. The fact is that most applications today demand that you keep good control over the amount of porosity in a weld. The mechanical strength of a high-speed train, for example, its passengers are counting on that strength to be there or an aluminum smelter that's transporting a massive amount of electrical current. If the bus bar heats up due to poor conductivity caused by porosity, you could end up with a catastrophic failure. Builders and designers now determine what level of porosity they will allow, and contractors have to ensure that their porosity levels are below to guarantee the required strength. The sources of hydrogen can be anything involved in the welding process. Sources can be found in the form of humidity, the equipment, the wire, the gas, the feed path, and the weldment. The fact is that hydrogen usually arrives at the weld carried by something else, sometimes dirty wire. Sources of hydrogen in the welding consumable can be residual hydrocarbons from the drawing process, lubricants added to the wire to make spooling easier or to assist feeding. If the wire has hydrocarbons on it, you're feeding those hydrocarbons directly into the arc where they separate out into atomic components and the hydrogen is absorbed. It can arrive on the plate if the plate has oil on it or if someone has oil on their hands while handling the plate. Even the oil coming from sweaty hands can contaminate a weld joint. It can arrive on the plate via the oxide on the surface. The oxide can become hydrated and can contain oil and or moisture. And under the arc, the hydrogen separates out and is absorbed into the weld puddle. You see examples of this when you have water staining on aluminum. The oxide grows thick and it's milky in color because it contains moisture. If you try to weld a water-stained plate without removing the oxide, that trapped moisture ends up as part of the weld. Hydrogen can also arrive in the gas which is supposed to be dry, but if not, even small amounts of contaminated gas will pollute the weld such that it won't pass a specification. It can arrive with the equipment. A water-cooled gun with a small leak or that has a contaminated liner, for example. Or you can draw in moisture through contaminated or malfunctioning nozzles, tips, and gas diffusers. Depending on your climate, you have to take care to prevent condensation caused by moving from air condition to humid environments, as condensation can form on the wire. Secondarily, keep in mind that now not only are you getting condensation, but now you're drawing the condensation into the gun liner and contaminating it. The result is a contaminated gun. Even if you change the wire or let the wire warm up, 
the interior of the gun or the liner that the wire is passing through can be quite contaminated. And if there is more than a 5 degree temperature differential between the plate material and the ambient air, you run the risk of condensation on the plate itself. It can arrive via the tools you are using. Contaminated gloves soaked with sweat are a primary source of moisture or cross-contamination by moving from jobs that involve grease or oil to welding and not changing your gloves, or using the tools from an oily environment to prep the weld site. If you're using air tools for sanding or brushing, air has two problems with it. By compressing air, water forms in the compressor. While using these tools to clean the aluminum, given that the exhaust from these tools is usually forward, away from the operator, you are spraying moist air at the weld joint. This can be further aggravated because most shops add oil to the air because it makes the tools run better and last longer. So now you're blowing oily damp air at the very joint you're trying to clean. The solution for porosity is control over hydrogen. Anything that can introduce hydrogen needs to be controlled. Hand tools and gloves have to be kept clean and free of moisture and oils. If you use air tools, use ones that have an exhaust away from the welding area, or better still, use electric or woodworking tools. Care must be taken to ensure that oxide flakes are not smeared into the surface of the weldment. Use power tools with a reasonable amount of pressure. Wire needs to be stored in a dry temperature controlled environment. And if it's stored at a temperature different than ambient temperature, the wire needs to be allowed to acclimatize in the plastic bag prior to installation on the feeder. Cardboard boxes and packaging which have been soaked in water makes the product suspect. Clear plastic is only a good, not a great barrier to moisture. Spools which have come in contact with water should be discarded as they can never be properly dried. The wire feeder should be the type where the wire is contained within the feeder in a housing. Preferably, the feeder should be heated to keep the wire at a temperature warmer than ambient air, which will prevent condensation. The liners, feeder and gun all need to be in good repair and kept free of contaminants. Over time, due to contaminant buildup, even if the wire you're passing through the gun is clean, it will be fouled by what's in the liner. As a general rule, if you can't figure out why you're having porosity problems and everything checks out, including the wire, nine times out of ten you'll find that the gun liner wasn't changed often enough and contaminants were allowed to accumulate. Proper maintenance of drive rolls, tips, liners, nozzles, solenoids and diffusers is very important. Nozzles have insulators in them and over time they break down. When they break down, you can create a venturi that sucks air through the gap in the insulator. Wire feeders that have water cooling systems need to be properly maintained. O-rings need to be changed regularly and lubricated so that you don't end up with any moisture getting around connections and getting into the gun. This type of preventative maintenance will pay off in the long run because polluting the inside of a gun by drawing moisture into it means it's contaminated until you can clean it out. The reality is that when you find a source of hydrogen in the feed path, it's necessary to fully clean out the source of the contamination. In the case of liners and conduits, you'll probably have to replace them rather than clean them. From the perspective of the arc, buy gas from a reputable supplier that has gas control systems that prevent moisture from happening. For critical work, ask your supplier for a gas analysis certificate indicating the moisture content to be sure. Running ultra-high purity gas is also an option. If doing critical work, request a testing certificate tested to AWS Schedule J, which is an overhead weld that confirms the amount of hydrogen. Preparation of the plate is important. Plate has to be within 5 degrees of ambient temperature or it's going to be a cause due to condensation. The plate and welding area have to be cleaned of hydrocarbons using a proper solvent and after you've removed the hydrocarbons, you need to use a stainless steel brush to remove the oxide which can also contain moisture or oil. Once you remove the oxide, you need to reclean the area with proper solvent because you now have loose oxide floating around that contains moisture. 
Just because it's been brushed doesn't mean the oxide is necessarily gone from the weld zone, so you have to make sure. It's not good enough to clean just the top layer. All the weld joint has to be cleaned with solvents and a stainless steel brush. Solvents should have high solvency, evaporate quickly, have as low a flammability as possible, and have no harmful effects to the operator. If blowing the joint out with an air hose, the air has to be dry enough to paint with. If preheat is to be used, apply preheat in such a way as not to contaminate the weld zone with moisture from combustion. Electric heaters are better. Preheat and interpass temperature should not exceed 65 degrees Celsius. The cleaning action in aluminum welding is the gas ions hitting the surface of the weld. So if the area where you're welding can't receive or accept gas ions bombarding the surface because they're hidden, then that area doesn't get cleaned. An example of that in fillet welds is the space between the upper and lower leg of the fillet or the upper and lower plate. An example of that in butt joints is if you have a tight-fitting butt joint between the backing bar or two plates and they're butted together. The gas cannot work its way into clean. If those areas aren't clean of oxides, hydrocarbons, or lubricants, then of course you're going to have a problem. Finally, there are some key wire storage precautions which can be ordered as an option from the manufacturer. Vacuum sealing is an option. Desiccant can be added to keep the wire dry. A humidistat can be added so that you know what condition the wire is in when you receive it. Hydrogen is difficult to handle once it's absorbed in the weld. The ultimate solution is to prevent hydrogen from getting into the weld in the first place. Wire itself only has minute amounts of hydrogen, so as a general rule, it's usually not the primary cause of porosity. It's what's on the wire and in the weld area that causes porosity, and this is why it is so important to control these factors for a quality weld. Often welding takes place in high humidity environments. As humidity is difficult to control, all other sources of hydrogen must be controlled to a much greater degree. When it comes to hydrogen porosity, it's all about prevention.